Hey, we're in White Court, Alberta, and we're building a truck shop. And you can see here there's a footprint. We got all our bundles are spaced out, ready to start. We're just ready to start training. Here we have, um, well, there's probably eight of us here that are going to be working on this thing. And if you come here closer, you'll be able to see what we're doing. I'll get down here to show you. We have footings already in place. And the chalk line's already here, it's black. And they put these bars in, the engineer wanted these hooks on the top, that's not normal. Normally we might have a little bit of a hook, but normally you just have a straight bar sticking up. This is what we have to deal with today, we'll get our block over top of that. And we're just going to build this uh, four rows high, so we'll be just out of the ground, be about this high, we're going to place concrete, then they're going to backfill and get everything set up for going above grade, and then they're going with the fox blocks all the way up to the top. Okay, we just finished row number one on this uh, shop that we're building here. This main body of the building is eight inch block and we started on that end and worked our way this way. There's four or 564 lineal feet of wall being built here. This front section out over here when you come panning across, that is six inch block. The demising wall here is eight inch and then that area is six inch and that's going to be office area. So the first row took us a half hour with eight guys and now we're waiting for rebar. So we have just finished the second row of block. We now only have six men. So for this row we used six men and it took us 45 minutes because we did all of the rebar in the first row and the rebar we're working on in the second row. So 45 minutes for this row, a little bit longer than the first row, but we had to contend with those hooks on top of the uh, footing dowels and that slowed us down a little bit. We're also using the uh, Foxbox HV clip on this row and this is HV because it works horizontally and vertical, same clip, one box does all. And what we're doing with this, if I climb in the hole here, you'll see if there's a joint line right here, I go on the second tie from the joint line, I reach in there and I clip that on. And then second tie back from it, I clip, reach on and clip that on. If I do that at every joint, the second tie back, each way, that's two foot on center all the way around. So we're doing that on this just to create a beam effect on this. That's gonna help straighten everything out. Now if there's any irregularities in the footing, this fixes a lot of that as well. So we're doing that here and then we're gonna start on the third row right away. So this row took us 45 minutes with six guys. Okay, we have finished the four rows of block. We didn't put rebar in the top row because we're gonna have concrete going halfway up that row so we don't need that rebar in there. So that saved us a bit of time on this one. On the bottom here, after we finished the four rows, we did this a little bit different. We kicked it on the chalk line. We had a person on the inside and a person on the outside. We kicked it on the chalk line and then we spray foamed it. So now it's going to be held onto the chalk line and won't move on us. So we can place concrete and we know that's going to be good. And then we don't have to come back and rip off any cleats or anything after. These contractors on this site taught us something, how to use tuck tape to protect the top when we're placing concrete. And I want to show you how that works. So here I've got a roll of tuck tape which is almost the same width as our product. Now the interlock on the Fox block is exactly an inch wide. It's two inch long by an inch wide for these projections. And the, the um, holes in there is the same size. So we have a solid piece on both sides and it works really good with the tuck tape here. I'll show you how this works. I start it on one of our projections and I just make sure that they're in the center of the tuck tape. And I just run along the wall like that really quick. Cut it off on the end there and then I just follow my fingers along here and it seals it up so that now I can place concrete and the concrete just sheds right off of that. If you look down this wall, this wall took me about five minutes to do and I've got both sides done. Now I'm ready to stick my vertical rebar in. I want to show you here, we did four rows here. We only wanted to do three but they ran into some clay so they had to dig a little bit deeper. We ended up doing four rows and it was very simple for us to put these together. We used the Fox Blocks HV clip which you can just take out and clip back on again like that and do them vertical. The same one worked there and this was 560 lineal feet of wall to do this. Uh, it took us um, a day to build this and today we're just finishing touches and now we're going to place concrete in. So all in all it'll probably take us 14 hours with our crew that varied from six men to eight men. Our man hour rate on this would be about 0 0.035 is what we were hitting with it. It's a very easy job to do. They used um, 10 millimeter bar for the horizontals which would be the same as a number four bar and this here is a 15 millimeter bar which would be the same as a number five bar. So a very simple job. This job's going to now go another 18 foot high on top of this. It's going to be a nice truck shop. 
and so you'll see that in other videos. Okay, we're starting to place concrete. We have a really nice concrete mix design. It's made for ICF construction and uh, it has extra cement content and a little bit of mid-range water reducer in it and uh, we're doing it at a 140 slump which would be about a between a five and a six inch slump concrete. Okay, we're getting our beam filled up right now. We've got a nice mix design. Everything's working good. That center beam is uh, eight inches down from the top already and all vibrated, consolidated. Okay, if you see he's placing almost a six inch slump concrete into this wall. And if you look down at the bottom of the wall along the footing, we've left the interlock on and it's about a half inch off of the footing and there's no escape at all of concrete.